Hey everybody, got another before and after tutorial for you here where we start in Lightroom, no changes to the photo, and uh, go through all the Lightroom stuff and then go through all the photo stuff, the Photoshop stuff. Basically a whole round trip from start to finish. I'll warn you ahead of time, this one's gonna end up as a black and white. Um, I don't do a lot of black and whites, but when I do, I use Silver Effects Pro just because it is the it is the standard out there for black and white. So I'll spend about 10 seconds showing you how to do it in Lightroom, but I'm gonna spend the rest of the time later on in Silver Effects Pro. Just to let you know, because I know somebody's gonna complain that they don't have the plugin, but that's what everybody uses for black and white. So just gotta let you know that. All right, let's get over here to the basic panel. Hit reset button, nothing going on in the photo. Overall, I would warm it just a little bit. Um, we'll come down here. Bring the exposure up a hair. Uh, one of the things I love is this highlight slider, especially for something like this, because the, the sky gets too bright, so my highlight slider really does a good job of being able to pull that back. All right, bring out my shadow slider here, bring out some of the shadows. All right, whites and blacks. Set a white point, hold down your Option or Alt key, and click whites. Everything goes black. Move it to the right until you start to see something appear. That's a white point. Do the same thing with blacks. Everything turns white, move it to the left until you start to see these little specks appear. That's a black point. So it just gives you a good overall kind of a balance to the photo. And then from there, sometimes I'll even come back here and tweak the overall exposure a little bit, okay? Hit the backslash key, that's before, that's after. It was definitely underexposed. To give you a little bit of insight here, um, I, I like the streaks in the water. If I exposed any longer, it, the water got too soft and I lost some of that streakiness that these rocks caused. So that's why I underexposed a little bit knowing that I'd be able to come here later and just take care of what I needed to. All right, so remember backslash shows before, backslash after. Come down here, hit clarity. Just add a little bit of kind of overall contrast to the photo. Go up to my graduated filter. Here's what I love about Lightroom 4. Um, the graduated filters for skies, right? So take the exposure down, click, drag. And you do something like that. And it's just like a, a graduated um, ND filter that you'd use in front of your camera, uh, which I don't use anymore because I think this is way better than anything you can use in front of your camera now. Um, this is one of those places where it's better not to get it right inside the camera because what you can do after is so much better and so much easier and so much more effective. Um, but it's the same, the same result is it's going to darken. It darkens the sky, but it's going to darken anything that protrudes over that horizon line. One of the things I like is this highlight slider is this lets me darken the sky too, where I don't have to because it's just going to hit the highlights, remember? So it's not actually hitting all this stuff here. So it's a good slider to let me go in here. You can see this is, this is if I increase it, if I decrease it, I can bring back some of the, the, I can make the sky darker without having to make this darker. Although I think I still need to come in here and just bring my exposure down a little bit. Okay. All right. And that's about it. I'm not really going to do maybe a little bit of clarity, a little bit of warmth. Remember this is going to be a black and white photo. So um, I already know that at this point. So we'll come down here, hit close, hit the backslash key. That's before and that's after, okay? Now, this this image kind of just jumped out at me and, and you should go into my blog. Um, hopefully I get to write the post today too. So you can read the post over on my, my official blog, mattk.com, M-A-T-T-K.com, where I'm not a big black and white guy. And this is like my first true, like, jump into black and white as as really thinking about it. I've converted photos to black and white before, but I've just done it just because I, I thought I should. Um, where this this photo really kind of jumped out at me, it's the ominous nature, it's the the white streaks in the in the water that I think pull you to all these cool places in the photo. And so just, it sounds silly, it's kind of said something to me as a black and white. And I am so not that artsy black and white type person. So this, this was a monumental moment for me, um, but anyway. Um, so go Matt K, M -A -T -T -K .com. Hopefully I get to do the post today so you can, you can watch the tutorial and read that post over there as well. But anyway, uh, so we're going to head over here. Oh, if you want to do it inside of Lightroom here, it takes 10 seconds. Hit the black and white. Uh, if you want to move the sliders based on what color is in here, you can do that. I, I don't think it looks that good. So we'll come back over here. It just looks dull and flat to me. So we're going to jump over into Photoshop. Head over into Photoshop. If you're wondering why I don't use the Lightroom version of the plugin, it's because most of the time all my photos see Photoshop. Um, there's going to be a degree of retouching. You know, this one's got some spots. 
here. So I'm going to grab my spot healing brush. I know Lightroom has a spot removal tool, but there's some other things that I want to do here. So to me, Photoshop, everything sees Photoshop to a degree. It might not be a long time, but everything sees Photoshop to a degree. So it's just easier for me to do the plugins inside of Photoshop as well. Cause I got layers, I got selections, I got all that fun stuff. So I'm just going to remove some spots here. Apparently I have a spotty, spotty camera. There we go. Looks good. I don't really like that boat on the horizon line. So we'll get rid of that. We'll get rid of whatever that little thing is. We'll get rid of that little thing. Clean it up a little bit. All right. Looking pretty good. And I don't know what this is over here. It's kind of bugging me though. So we'll get rid of that too. All right. So let's go ahead and convert this to black and white filter, Nick software, silver effects pro two. My starting place is usually one of the presets over here. So I'll kind of bounce back and forth. I'll just, it's kind of nice because you can just look through. And the, the further down you get, the crazier they get. Uh, so I'm going to stay up here. I'm going to go with the underexposed version, but I'm going to negate some of the underexposedness. I, I like what it does overall to the photo. I want to make it overall brighter. So I'm going to negate some of the, un over the underexposedness of it, if that's a word, and increase the brightness, increase the dynamic brightness here. I have no idea what the difference between the two are, but one of them seems to increase brightness in a dynamic way, apparently. Um, let's see here. And the highlights will pull. You can see the highlights up in the sky. So I'll pull that over to the right a little bit. All right. Contrast. Amplify the whites a little bit here. Structure is a, it's a great little, it's a contrast. It's, it's Nick software. It's like one of their key adjustments in, in a lot of their filters. It's just a neat adjustment. It's kind of like clarity, but kind of like a, almost a better clarity in many ways. I really like structure. So you can see if you go crazy, it looks like a whacked out HDR. We don't want to go crazy with it. Just a nice little subtle structure here. Come down here. I, you know, I forgot to do this. I find myself picking a preset first and then applying a color filter. That's usually the second thing I do and I forgot to do it, but I just kind of click on all these different color filters here. Kind of like the green one for this one. Maybe, yeah, let's go with yellow. Film types, I'm, I'm not a big fan of, of film effects, so I never ever open that. I leave it closed all the time. Undertoning, only thing I do here is I bring this over to like a gold tone and increase the strength a little bit. Not, not like that. I don't want it. I don't want it to be obvious. I just want a subtle amount of toning to it. Okay. That's before that's after it's very, very subtle, but it's there. Okay. Come down here, go to vignette. I usually just choose one of the presets. Let's choose the middle preset there. I make it a little bit more rectangular. That's looking pretty good. All right. We can compare what it's going to do is show us just a basic default black and white conversion and then our version here. So basic default black and white. If you're a zony and you want to come down here, you got your whole zone system. I'm not a big zony, so I don't really do much down here. I, I do notice I'm lacking some on the highlight side. I'm not going to worry about it too much because I don't want to make this that much brighter. So I'm kind of okay with that. And again, I'm not a zony, so it's okay that I don't, I don't have all zones represented here. I'm fine with that. All right, and I might bring up my midtones and shadows, just a hair. Okay, let's take a look. Before, after it looks good, I'll click OK. It's going to bring us back into the Photoshop interface. And if I had any one tiny little thing that I'm going to do here, which hopefully it'll let me do very, very soon, it appears that it takes a while for this to get here. Um, I'm just going to see these rocks over here. I'm just going to grab my uh, my burn tool, just darken them a little bit. Okay. It's almost like I'm darkening them now, but I don't have a brush to darken them with because I apparently can't do anything yet. Come on. It's not that hard. You guys can come on. Come on. You can do it. Good boy. All right. Go over here, grab my burn tool, exposure around 20%. Not too much. Just darken it. And then filter, sharpen, hit it with copious amounts of unsharp mask because this is a D800, it's got sick amounts of detail in it, so I can go crazy with this. 
hit OK. And you can see, yeah, crazy amounts of detail. I love that camera. Anyway, so let's back out a little bit here. All right, and let's go to File Save. It's going to save the image. We don't do Save As. We don't change the name. We don't change the location. Just File Save. Go back over here to Lightroom. I'll hit the letter L for lights out a couple of times, and then I'll hop back over to this image here. Let's just hit the uh, let's hit the reset key. Okay, so that's our before image. Before any adjustments inside of Lightroom, and that's our final photo. Okay, so before and then after. All right. So, folks, thank you so much for uh, for stopping by today. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them here. I'll try to uh, to jump on and answer them when I can. In the meantime, my name is Matt Kleskowski. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you again very soon.